Hello, my sweetie tarts. Welcome back to Mystic Maiden Soaps. And if you're new here, welcome. Hit that subscribe and like button, please, if you enjoy the video. We got to over 100 subscribers. I have no idea how that happened. But thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. So today, we are doing a simple men's soap with pumice stone and snake shed in it. So I'm going to tell you some of the pros and cons of working with snake shed. And so in my lye solution, what I do is I just chop up a little bit of the shed and do a pinch, put it in my water. You can see it in there. And then I add my lye. And then you let it sit for however long. Of course, the longer you let it sit, the more will dissolve. Um, but what it adds to the soap is similar to uh, like silk or kaolin clay. It has a very nice, silky, soft, smooth feel to it. There's not, there's not a good way to describe it. So I strain all the leftover shed out. It will not dissolve 100% but the majority of it will. And what actually causes it to dissolve is the lye solution itself, not the heat from the lye. So just keep that in mind. And if you put too much in there, it can cause your soap to accelerate and it can cause well-behaving fragrances to misbehave. The first time I ever used it, I put a whole shed in there, which was like a five foot long shed, probably about two to three inches in diameter from a California King snake. And my well-behaving fragrance oil rice, it accelerated. I almost didn't get the soap done, but the end feel of the soap was fantastic. It was just Oh, it was amazing. And in my opinion, I think it holds the fragrance in the soaps very similar to how Kaylin Clay does. It might just be me, but that particular soap that I added the whole shed to seemed to be super strong in scent even after cure. Even six months later, it was still really strong. So you just blend it in, bring it to emulsion, thin trace, whichever one you're looking for. I usually go just for emulsion, just in case I have any issues. So here I am adding Bowtie and Bourbon by Aztec Candle Company. This is a really good men's fragrance oil. It does slightly discolor, um, but not, not too bad. It goes to maybe uh, between like a light yellow to a light tan but it smells really good so I've also learned that when you put your fragrance oils in you want to stir as soon as possible otherwise if they're just sitting there they tend to rise accelerate and that's just them doing their weird thing because they're just sitting in the batter Now I think I'm just sitting here trying to figure out what to do. Making sure it's not going to accelerate. So with my snake shed, I don't know if I already said this, I add a pinch. I cut it up in little small pieces. I add a just a pinch or two to my water and then add my lye. And you just, as you're stirring in your lye, it'll stir in the snake shed and then just let it sit for however long. You can let it sit overnight. You can let it sit a few hours till your lye is at the temperature that you want. Either one is fine. Now we're gonna add pumice powder. I ended up adding it a tablespoon at a time. And the reason being, I had a heck of a time opening that bag. The reason being is I wasn't too sure how pumice-y I wanted it. I don't think that's a word, but it is now. So, I added a little and it did you can see it clumped up so and I ah, forget it I'm just gonna dump it all in and then I realized I'm not gonna get get a good idea because it does kind of clump up 
So I ended up having to stick blend it real quick. But you can, I could see that I wanted a little more. I didn't want it too abrasive, but abrasive enough that when you put it on you, it's a good exfoliation. I made a bar just playing around with the recipe and playing, playing around with the pumice that was highly exfoliated. Um, and my husband uses it on his head and I yell at him every time, but he likes it. So what are you going to do? So I just blend this in, ended up pouring it. I am going to show you how, um, I work the sides of my mold because a big thing with the Amazon molds is they tend to pull away from the sides the, of the wooden holder. So when I have a simple design like this, I'll show you how I put the sides back. So you can fast forward until we get to that point if you want. The rest is just pouring. Okay, so now we're going to pour. Oh, now I fast forward it. So I push the sides out, fill it part way, tap it, and then you can push the sides out again, fill it some more. And you want to tap it halfway through if you can to get the air bubbles to come up. And then I just gently pull it, but it never fails that when you do that last tap, it still pulls away from the sides. And I don't know if it goes... It doesn't usually go all the way down to the bottom, but it does it in the middle. So it kind of bows in the middle and you get a little slightly funky sides. So I take a chopstick and I go along the sides and push against the side. And then I use my chopstick to actually get the soap that you see overflowed and push it back in. And that is what I do when I have nice simple soaps like this or even... Uh, multi-colored soaps I'll do the tops like this and then I push part way down I don't go all the way down to the bottom with a chopstick if I have a design inside because you don't want to mess up that design I was trying to do a top but and it actually showed up once it was done there was a little swirl in there that I didn't really mean to have and I just go through with a paper towel and wipe off the sides so I don't accidentally grab it before it's saponified and forget and then end up touching my face or something. So I didn't record the cut because it was just a plain soap, but I have a picture at the end. Thank you for sticking with me. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe. And for everybody that is, I appreciate you.